Good morning. Yeah. Hey, Grayson. So, Grayson had his first day of school yesterday, and several people have asked, how did he do? Well, he was kind of ADD dog, attention deficit disorder. <laughs> he, I don't know the conditions under which he was raised and kept before I got him, but he's, you know, judging by how he looked, he obviously was not cared for, were you, sweet boy? And if he physically looked so bad, you know, and hadn't been, he hadn't been groomed, he was full of fleas and flea dirt and just had, uh, you know, hair in his ears and in his eyes. He was in terrible shape. So, you know, I'm not surprised that now he doesn't seem to know how to interact with people because I don't think he must have had very much. Well, <clears throat> when I picked him up from dog school, the instructor told me that he had been, that she hadn't been able to do very much with him because he was very distracted, every little sound, um, and I felt so bad. I mean, she was hopeful, you know, she said, this is not, so uncommon um, on a dog's first day, you know, and we'll see how he does tomorrow. And they had, oh, oh, I'm all prepared here with a poop bag. <laughs> um, she said, we have this pheromone stuff that calms them down or something. We'll use that tomorrow. Well, anyway, I got home with him and I just felt so bad. I felt like oh, this poor sweet doggy. You know, I mean, I just felt really, really bad. You know, in a way it's almost like if the teacher tells you that your child has some sort of problems or something learning, you know, and you just feel like, oh no, you know, what are we gonna do? Are you ever gonna learn? And stuff like that. Anyway. The fact is that because of past poor emotional management on my part, I feel very comfortable feeling sad, you know, oh dear. It's a, it's a familiar feeling. Because it's a familiar feeling, it's comfortable. And I put a quote on my Facebook page today, and it's something along the lines of, the future is promised to no one. So go for it now. And I had put that on my page last night and I was sitting there just feeling so sad and I didn't know what I was gonna do. And I was thinking, you know, thoughts like, oh gosh, is he just gonna be in, you know, undisciplined? I don't know. I wasn't, you know, there weren't even definite words to what I was thinking. It was just this sort of unspoken rambling, fear and worry and sadness. And the reason I'm telling you this is, you know, I had it about the report on my dog yesterday at dog school, all right? But we, ha we all have these kinds of things happen in relation to all sorts of stuff. And by the way, I see there are people watching and I greet you this morning. I hope you have a happy day. I, I'm a little too far away to read the names, but hey, so say something when you come on so that when I look back at the comments, I'll see you were there. Anyway, so back to the quote on my Facebook page. The future is promised to no one, so go for it now. Well, I could have sat there last night and said, you know, I just, I feel so bad for him. And like I said, I felt comfortable in feeling badly because it was a familiar feeling for many times in my past. The moodiness, the just downness, the sort of Eeyore outlook, you know, from Winnie the Pooh, sort of like, what next? Oh, you know, what else did I expect to happen? Oh, I figured that would happen. You know, <laughs> I said to myself, okay, I don't know what to do about any of this, but I'm going to get up and do something different. 
And I'm, I happen to be listening to an audio book by Jamil Frazier called The Twelve Shifts. And it's about, well, so far, it's about the whole idea that you have events that happen in your life and events plus your response equals the outcome. Now, you can't control a lot of events that happen, right? Like, I, I had no control over how Grayson was going to be at school, but I do have control over how I respond. Now, is it going to help me if I'm sitting around going, you know, woe is me, my poor dog is just untrainable, the poor thing, he was probably neglected, and, you know, blah, 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 on and on. No, it's not going to help me, and it's not going to help the doggy. okay? So, I put on this uplifting audio book that's explaining to me that my response is the thing that I can control. So, events plus response, E plus R, equals O, outcome. So, the outcome of the situation is going to be greatly affected by how I respond. So I thought, well, what can I do? I will work with the trainer, obviously. Um, she sent me four videos of working with Grayson so I could understand what, how she was training, how I need to work with him, what I need to practice, and also to see how he was responding so I could understand, you know, um, what was going on. Most dogs are socialized with a lot of people. Obviously, Grayson was not. He's not one of those dogs. So he, uh, and even in my apartment, if he, anytime he hears a sound, like even when the air conditioning unit comes on, he's like, you know, he, I don't know. He just wasn't used to hardly anything. He saw leaves, oh, excuse me. He saw leaves blowing in the street the other day. And it was like he had never seen something like that before. I don't know. It was very strange. Right, Grayson? So, anyway, I can control my response. And that's why I'm telling you about this. Because we all can control how we respond to situations. And based on our response, the situation can seem worse or it can seem better or hopeful, negative or positive, okay? So um, I'm telling you, last night when I felt sad about him, it was a deep down, just oh, terrible sadness and I felt so sorry for him. You know, I once saw a Caesar, Caesar Milan, you know, the dog whisperer guy, um, he was talking about something on TV. This was several years ago. And he said something that actually is so relatable and transferable to act to how you relate with people, too. He said, you know, if you see a dog, say, that's been hurt out in the street or something, you know, a stray dog, most people just feel so sorry for it. Or if your dog was hurt or something. And... He said, you know what? Your feelings are not going to help you or the dog. You either need to do something or, you know, don't, <laughs> don't wallow in those feelings. And he said it much better than I just said it. You know, it was very engaging. And yeah, you know, I understand when he said it. But maybe you get my drift here. That sometimes we're so enveloped in our own feelings that that becomes the reality. And sometimes we need to cut through those feelings so that we can really see reality. And last night when I decided I've got to somehow break out of this great, oh, poor dog feeling, <laughs> then, I, you know, and I listened to this audio book that helped me to see the reality and to become hopeful. And um, I got a text from the dog trainer and she said, are you busy? And I said, no. And 
we talked on the phone for about 20 minutes. And after we talked, I felt so much more hopeful also because she explained um, other things that we could do with Grayson and other possibilities. And, um, you know, just because the first day didn't go well doesn't mean all is lost. <laughs> Aren't we like that sometimes? Like we try something new and it goes badly and we think, you know, I'm just so stupid or I'm so uncoordinated or I'm never doing that again. Or why did I even try this? Or this was a, a disaster, a fiasco. We often think that about ourselves or if our kids are involved in something or a spouse or a friend, you know. Um, or sometimes we say, I knew it. I knew this was not going to work out. Oh, all of us, me too, need to stop with these negative ways of thinking because they make us, it's like an ingrown hair okay? The ingrown hair needs to be <laughs> let out and <laughs> get it out of the way so you can be healthy. I mean, you think, oh, it's kind of gross, isn't it? Think of negative thoughts as starting to grow an ingrown hair. Yuck. We can choose how we respond to the things that happen in our lives. How we respond will really determine a lot about the outcome. You know what? So you got fired from your job even though you were doing everything you were supposed to and it was unfair. What are you gonna do? Yeah, okay, you may cry for a day, but then get up and do something to change the situation. Go look for a new job. Oh my goodness, I know I'm kinda going on here, but I'll just tell you. I was in a situation where um, I was in the middle of a divorce. My husband stopped supporting us. Well, for a while, I was delivering phone books for the phone company. You know, it was a, a part-time job in order to make money. I was a substitute teacher. I did all kinds of things. Even though I have a college degree and some graduate courses, I did what I needed to do, okay? I didn't sit around and just go, oh no, oh my gosh. What? So get out, do something different, change your thoughts, get out of your feelings and into the frontal part of your brain that's your executive control office. Make some decisions and don't wallow around in negative feelings because remember the future is promised to no one you only have now so get going get on it now god bless you and grayson says see you later alligator right grayson chewing on his big horn there <laughs>